I extend a cordial greeting to all who participate in this self-knowledge course conference. Today we will see topic number 27 of the course, in which we will study an important technique to advance in our work of psychological death. This is called the technique of the details, and by carrying it out we will be able to dissolve in its totality any psychological eye. Also applying this technique will allow us to see many more results and advances in the process of balancing the energy centers through psychological death, which will allow us to achieve perfect chastity in each of our centers. This chapter is esoterically titled Death, because he, who begins to disintegrate his defects, begins to leave the circle where all humanity is involved. He begins to die for the ego and begins to vivify his spiritual part, therefore, the things of the ego no longer interest him. Everything that moves all of humanity, greed, anxiety, lust, fear, vanity, pride, envy, etc., begin to lose meaning, because the person begins to find something very superior within himself and begins to glimpse a much more transcendental objective for his existence. So, when the person is going to be invited to commit a misdeed, the others say, it's useless, that's a dead man, because he no longer follows the path of the rest of humanity. Therefore, for all those who want to continue living in the ego, we will be dead, insensitive people, because we will no longer react mechanically to the desires of our ego, but rather we are focused on awakening that divine essence, which is what we really are. Every human being carries within them a divine spark called soul, budhata, or essence. It has different names, according to different cultures, but in reality, it is that divine spark that lives within us, that drives us and gives us strength to undertake a spiritual work, to yearn, seek and undertake work on ourselves. But that essence or soul, at this moment, is trapped in all our evils, in all those defects or psychological eyes, which make up what is esoterically called ego. These defects are what don't allow this essence to manifest freely, and don't allow us to think, feel and act consciously, because they take voice and control of the person. But, as we work on the disintegration of the defects, this divine essence grows and strengthens, and manifests itself with greater clarity and strength. It becomes a soul. There is another divine spark within us, a part of our spirit, called Divine Mother. Just as we all have an inner father who represents the wisdom of our consciousness, likewise we all have our particular inner mother, whose mission is to disintegrate the psychological defects that we observe and understand with a spear that she possesses, and which is the power of our sexual energy. This aspect of our consciousness, as we see in these images, has been represented in different ways in different cultures, but they all allegorize the feminine aspect of our inner divinity that has the mission of cleansing us of the ego that we carry inside. No matter how small a detail of ego we have observed manifesting in us, we must ask the Divine Mother within, my mother, eliminate this defect. Or disintegrate it with your spear. And she will do it this way because that is her mission, to help us free ourselves in this way. When we begin to observe ourselves and judge our negative ways of being, this part of our being begins to awaken and comes into activity. And as we ask it to disintegrate the selves that we observe, we begin to experience its power and begin to observe the great changes that are taking place inside us. Let's see then what the details technique is that will allow us to sharpen our self-observation and advance more quickly and effectively in our process of psychological death. To understand what this technique is about, we can compare the ego and its functioning with a tree. If we look at the structure of a tree, we will see that although a tree is standing on its main roots, these are not the ones that feed it, but rather they are the ones that support it against the winds, and support the weight of this tree, so that it doesn't fall, so that it doesn't collapse. We can also see that the tree has tiny roots that are the ones that spread throughout the rest of the earth, and these are the ones that absorb the sap to feed the tree. They are almost like little hairs, sometimes very, very thin. Well, this is the same as the ego of us, 
or of all humanity. We can compare the ego of an individual with a big tree. The thick roots that support the tree symbolize capital defects, such as lust, greed, anger, pride, envy, and others, which are like the main structure of the ego, also known as the heads of the legion, or deadly sins. And the small roots then symbolize the details, tiny manifestations of the ego in us. And they are all those ways, direct or indirect, in which at every moment and in every situation these defects manifest themselves in us, in our emotion, that is, in what we feel, through our mind, what we think about, since defects whisper thoughts in our mind at all times. Also, through all kinds of mechanical bodily reactions, and through what we say and the way we act. And these are details that ultimately belong to this, or that psychological defect, and that sometimes are manifestations, or details so subtle that we do not believe they are defects. But when we dig deeper, we realize that those small manifestations are feeding those larger defects. The ego feeds on all those small details that we have in large quantities and that are expressed in us at all times, and we don't realize the amount of energy they are stealing from us. And we don't realize that each of these small manifestations are what give strength to the great manifestations of our ego. So, we must begin to sharpen self-observation to discover these details. Sometimes small details like sarcasm. But when we observe what is behind that little sarcastic comment we can find pride, superiority, disgust, rejection, and criticism. We are going to find details, for example, in all those negative thoughts that we constantly have, which behind them are feeding fear, self-pity, nonconformity, envy, etc. We can find many details by observing a state of resentment, a state of impatience or intolerance, and we can discover how each small manifestation of these defects feeds our anger. Small details such as morbidity, curiosity, lasciviousness, fantasizing, viewing certain obscene content, etc. They are feeding our lust. Details as small as picking up a coin from the floor that doesn't belong to us, is a small detail of greed that we don't usually pay attention to. And so, each of our defects is being fed, and all of this, in turn, is maintaining and sustaining that tree that is the ego. If we begin to make the effort to observe more and more details, and increasingly smaller, and more subtle details, we will be able to disintegrate any negative way of being within us. Sometimes they are details that are camouflaged as consciousness, details that we consider good or well-intentioned, but when we observe them, they are the manifestations of the same defects filtered by the personality. By that appearance that we want to show, that fears what others will say, and that acts based on instilled concepts, but never based on an understanding from consciousness. We could give an example to better illustrate this of the details, with the defect of greed. Greed is that defect within us that, based on desire, always wants to have more to be able to waste, and that based on fear, always fears the pain of lack. And that is why it lives in that constant desire to accumulate money. Then, we could see as big details of this greedy eye. The ambitious self, manifested in all those desires, plans and projects that we make seeking to have more than what we need. Also, a big detail of this defect is, the thief self, which seeking to satisfy its desires takes what does not belong to him. Even, as I mentioned a moment ago, manifesting itself in details, as small as taking a pen that doesn't belong to us and keeping it, picking up a coin or bill from the floor that we didn't drop, or borrowing something and not returning it, with the many justifications that we could have, which are also small details of this eye. But we could also see details that seem to be very good, but when we observe and judge them, we discover that they are also part of this ego and that they will feed it indirectly. Like worrying about not having money to pay for certain things. We can think that this is consciousness, that it is responsibility, but these justifications and concepts of personality don't allow us to see all the details of this I that are manifesting. Such as complaint, frustration, fear, comparison, anxiety, victimization, lack of acceptance, lack of trust in the inner being, etc. 
and we don't see that these details are stealing enormous amounts of energy from us in that process, and that they are indirectly giving food to that greedy eye, which focuses excessively on the material. And that, because it is so busy and worried about the material things, doesn't let us have courage, time, or energy to work on awakening our consciousness. And so, we could see many details of these defects. And the idea is that we seek to expand our self-observation to discover all the details that make up the psychological defect that is manifesting in us at every moment, and ask our Divine Mother for the elimination of each one. Let's remember that we have many psychological defects within us that have trapped our consciousness. Then, we must begin to observe ourselves to see the thousands and thousands of details that make them up, which are what nourish the trunk. We are going to be aware of our mind at all times, that is, of every thought that comes to us. We are also going to be aware of our hearts, to observe all the emotions that manifest in us at every moment. And we will also be self-observing our sexual part, which is closely related to our instinct and our motor part. To discover the small and large details of the ego and eliminate them with the help of our particular Divine Mother. We have to start removing the form of food from that tree, which are the tiny roots. Negative details such as, bad thoughts, hatred, the envy that one feels towards other people, ambition, telling lies, saying words full of pride. In short, all those things that are ultimately negative, we must seriously begin to disintegrate them. Thus, the tree of the ego will become malnourished, will stop growing and will end up drying out. And as a result, or consequence, consciousness, that inner tree that represents the wisdom of our being, will develop, grow, and strengthen in us. With this work of the death of the ego, scientific chastity is acquired, which is the purification of our sexual energy through the balance of the centers, practicing right feeling, right speaking, right thinking and right acting. This process will allow us to reach the necessary level of purity in our sexual energy, so that, when practicing supra sex with our partner, the sacred fire of Kundalini is ignited in our spine, so that we can enter the path of initiation and begin to create our internal bodies. This work of the death of the ego will also allow us to develop love for humanity, because to love others we have to start by loving ourselves, love our consciousness and that love is demonstrated in the work we do to free it and awaken it, which will reward us with wisdom to be able to help others better and better. What is taught here is to be put into practice, so that wherever you go, whether you're working or whatever you're doing, you pay attention to your mind, heart, and sex. They are the three centers through which every defect manifests itself, and when it is manifesting, be it through any of these three centers, the request immediately comes to the Divine Mother to proceed to disintegrate it. We hope that this conference has been understood and that you are encouraged to practice this important technique, so that you begin to see great changes within yourself and in your lives. Remember to leave any questions that arise. In the next conference, we will study a very interesting topic. We will talk about the Christ Force. We will see what that famous force is, that many masters throughout all time have incarnated. We will see what the universal Christ is, and what the individual Christ is. And we will see how the possibility of incarnating that level of consciousness is latent in each of us. You are cordially invited. Until next time.